Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community. In our last video, I made a set of four punches and chisels out of fairly simple steel. These are made from 1045 steel. And today I'm going to work on a pair of V-bit blacksmithing tongs, using these as much as I can for most of the project where we need to punch a hole or cut a groove. Or the little V-folder here will be used to actually bend the V-bit part of the tongs. And we'll see how these stand up. Now, since doing that video, some people pointed out that there was some information online that said these should be tempered at 700 degrees or higher. I had not heard that before. I've always tempered 1045, 400, 450, something like that. I've always had good results with that. But because that information's out there, you might want to do a little bit more research. Don't just trust what I have to say. Do your own research. Look this stuff up. Come to your own conclusions because ultimately it's your tools and your safety that matters and you have to take charge of that. I'd hate to steer you in the wrong direction. However, I will say that most sources list 1045 as a material used for shafting, gears, things like that, and they very well might need a completely different tempering profile than you would for a punch or a chisel. So do some experiments, do test pieces, try them out, keep some notes so you know what you did, and then see how these things work in use. Now for our pair of tongs, I'm going to start with a piece of 3 quarter inch square bar, so that's 20 millimeter square bar. And this is 16 inches long, or roughly 410 millimeters long. I'm going to use half of this for each part of the tongs. So we're going to start by drawing out a jaw on one end, draw out part of the rein, then turn it around, do the same thing to the other end. At that point, we'll cut it in half, finish drawing out the reins. I'm going to try and do this without using another pair of tongs, so if this is one of your first blacksmithing tools, you might be able to do this without tongs. I have other videos where I've made tongs without having a pair of tongs to work with, and I'll link to one of those right up here so you can take a look at that. Really, I do advocate for buying your first pair or two pair of tongs so you've got something good to work with, something that will hold the material you're using to make your next pair of tongs, and that's a good way to progress, and you start off with a tool that you can use as a reference to see what you need to do to make the next tool. Now, I already have a fire lit in the coal forge, but before we get started, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives, and if you're thinking about taking blacksmithing from simply a hobby to a business that helps you earn an extra income, some of the classes on Skillshare on marketing, website design, product photography can really help you along on those goals. Personally, I'm taking some classes on video production, video editing, learning how to do better photo editing with Adobe Photoshop. They got lots and lots of classes on these subjects. I was using Skillshare before they reached out to sponsor some of my videos. So it's a product that I'm familiar with. It's a product that I've been happy to have. And it's really very affordable. It costs less than $10 a month for membership in Skillshare. That gives you access to all of their classes. Right now, the first 1,000 people that use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare. I'm going to start with a center punch mark here so I know where to cut it later, and that way I'll have both halves of my tongs the same with any luck. Make a nice deep center punch. And these start just like a pair of flat jaw tongs. It's not until we get to the point of bending the, the V bit that they change. So start by forging flat jaw tongs, and we'll do the V bit before we assemble them. I took the time to put a chalk mark at one and a half inches and at two and a half inches on my anvil, and I'll use those as guides as I forge these tongs.
As we go to step two, we're going to roll towards our tong hand. So if we hold tongs in our left hand, we roll to the left. If we hold our tongs in the right hand, we'd roll to the right. And then we also kick it out about 45 degrees to create the boss. Let's get that hot again though, that's already cooled off more than I'd like. And then the third one is also to the same side that you were rolling. So it's start here, here, here. And that's the basic shape of your jaw and your boss. We're going to refine that quite a bit, but that's a good start. That's where I'm going to leave the jaw and the boss for now. And just to clarify terminology, this part is the jaw, this is the boss where the rivet will go, and these are the reins that will be the handle part. The next step then is to draw out the reins, and I want to draw out a fair amount before I go ahead and turn it around. And of course the horn of the anvil is a great place to do this. Now this is going to take a while in three quarter inch material, so it is a bit of work, and don't go past your center punch mark, that tells you where you want to cut it. But if you persevere, you will get there. And here's our center punch mark, so it's still well out of the way. I'm going to let this cool, then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to work on the other end. Once it's down to a black heat, you can go ahead and quench it. So we set this up just like we did before. Half face blows at the near edge of the anvil, and I'm going to start at my inch and a half mark here. And then I'll turn it towards my tong hand and about 45 degrees across here, half face blows at the far edge, turn it towards my tong hand again, 
half face blows to define the boss. And then we can draw out the reins. It takes a little bit of back and forth to keep everything straight. As always, you should adapt what I'm showing you to suit the tools and the techniques that you have available in your shop. For me, I would do this under a power hammer, and that's how I'm going to do the second one. We've already seen that it can be done by drawing it out over the horn of the anvil. Depending on your experience, it might take you a half an hour or an hour to draw one of these out by hand. It might be an all-day project to draw one of these out by hand. I should be able to get it to the same point as this other one under the power hammer. Oh, in about two heats, I think. I'm going to use another one of the new 1045 tools. We'll use the chisel to cut this in half. And if you don't have a hardy for your anvil, or your anvil doesn't even have a hardy hole, this is always an option. Assuming, oh, there's my center punch mark. Remember that cool these off frequently. And I might get this hot again. It's another thing with tools of simpler steels. They may prefer not to work down to a dull red as much. 
Now don't cut all the way through, you don't want to hit your anvil. That's close enough. I'm going to cool off this end because it's been hot recently. Then I can just break that off of there. And then we need to finish drawing those out. Just keep working on it till it's what you like. Some people like round reins of their tongs, some like rectangular, some like oval, some octagon. Yeah, I finished cleaning up the reins on these. I didn't see any reason to just drag the video out doing that. Work on these until they're what you want. I used a spring swedge under the power hammer, and that gives me a 3 8 rein, and that's a very comfortable size for these. Maybe 5 16 is okay for lighter weight tongs, but I think starting with 3 quarter stock 3 8 reins is about right. And I cut a bunch off. These were way too long, so you could start with a little bit less material, maybe as much as two inches less material in that three-quarter bar we started with. I just don't see any reason for the reins of the tongs to be way out to here. I never hold them out there anyways. I tend to hold them about there, so that's kind of what I like. Up to you what you like. But now we need to clean this up. The bosses aren't exactly the same. I think they can be refined a little bit. Make sure the jaws look the same. Then we'll punch a hole and shape the V-bit.
Now you notice when I start that, I start with the jaw off the edge of the anvil so that I can punch this while it's flat. But when I bring it up here, that jaw would be in my way. So if I do that in reverse order and start here, then I can't get this over here as easily. You can come around backwards maybe, but that doesn't really fit either. So think about your order of process before you start and think kind of backwards about what's going to be in your way later. So start here, then you can turn that up and you can work on the face of the anvil. So you should now have two pretty well matching tong reins. Take the time to do any cleanup you need to on the, the bit part there before we put the bend in it. So to shape these, we're going to use the V-fuller inside of a fabricated V-swedge. That's just two pieces of square bar with a shank that fits in my hardy hole. And we're going to see if we can bend this. This is awfully thick, so it may not bend easily. This would be much easier done under the treadle hammer, probably. But we're going to see if we can manage to do it this way. Of course, this is going to want to twist. Let's see if we can give ourselves a head start here and see what happens in the vise. It's just an awfully thick piece to try and bend. Probably should have drawn it out thinner. Well, that at least gets the shape to want to start forming. Like so many things in blacksmithing, there's a fair amount of fiddle factor here. We've got the right idea going. Take some serious straightening. Which I think I'll do next.
Yeah, I think that's okay for now. We'll do the final refinement after we assemble it and put a bar in there to see how it fits. Let's see if I can start that with a hammer. That's much better. In the end, it's this inside corner that is more important than this outside. It doesn't matter if that's 90 degrees. This does need to be if you're going to hold square stock. Well, I would definitely go with that second method, starting with the peen of the hammer down in the V-switch. Got this started much better, way easier than using the vise, and way easier than trying to start with the V-4 and the V-switch. So that gives us two halves to our pair of tongs. The next thing to do is going to be to rivet them together, so I'm going to let these cool so I can get a rivet just the right size. I did knock them down a little bit with a countersink, and that eases the edges so you're not creating a shear effect that might break your rivet later. If these are good sharp edges you could actually cut your rivet with this because you've created a very effective rod shear that way. I'm going to use two inches of 3 8 round bar. I've cut most of the way through this but I'm going to heat it attached to the bar, put it in there and then snap it off and that way I don't have to fish around in the fire with a pair of tongs for this. I'm not going to use a rivet set on these. You certainly can if you want to, but I have no problem with kind of a flat rivet. If you like roundhead rivets, go ahead and use a rivet set. This is certainly not going to have enough heat left by the time I'm done lining it up. I just want to make sure it doesn't fall back out of the tongs again. And then I'll come back and work this side next. I'm going to put that on a bolster so it's supported up in the air. little bit of a thick bolster but I think it's going to work for the time being. That rivet started to bend a little bit but I don't think it'll hurt anything. So that's about all I can use that bolster for. Now I'll just come back and finish setting the rivet. that rivet as pretty as you want to, but most of my old tongs don't have any fancier rivet head on them than that. Now like usual, that's pretty much completely seized up. Yeah, got that hot and I went ahead and quenched the reins a little bit so I don't bend them doing this. And just work that back and forth and the joint will kind of work itself into shape, loosen up just enough. If you do that back and forth as it cools, you will end up with a very nice working pair of tongs.
but I think it's safe to say they probably don't exactly fit what I want them to, and they do not. So there's going to be a little bit of work to do here, so we're going to heat up and try not to heat the joint too much. Mostly we just want to heat the jaws. We may cool that joint just to avoid distorting it. Make sure that fits the, the bar nicely. And at the same time, you want to make sure that this is comfortable. And that's not bad. If you need to bring them together, bring them out, I would heat this section up, clamp that in the vise with the bar in it, and make that adjustment. But at the moment, I'm pretty happy with this. That should then hold three-quarter square or three-quarter round. Since our tools we started with were three-quarter round. Yep, and that's a good fit there. I think I will go ahead and open these up just a little bit, not much. I just put that in the vise so that doesn't open up. And keep an eye on what's centered. One of these may need to move more than the other to keep everything centered and aligned. I'm also moving them a little this way so that the ends here are in line. Just a little bit more comfortable to work with. These are Fairly rough looking togs, but 100% functional. I am going to trim the ends to make that look a little bit better. I went ahead and cut that off, did just a little grinding to even them up and make them look a little bit better. Then I'll put them back on this bar one last time, make sure they fit. Then as they cool, we'll put a little bit of wax on them, and these should be a finished, functional pair of V-bit tongs. I'll heat the reins up lightly as well and just put a little beeswax on these as they cool off. Not absolutely necessary, but helps prevent rust in the long run and helps the joint run smoother to get a little wax melted down in there. It's perhaps still a little hotter than I would like it. That completes a fairly simple pair of V-bit tongs. These are a real handy style of tong, even though I kind of fiddled with it a little bit going to the vise. That second method was quite simple and quite straightforward, and I think these are way easier to make than bolt jaw tongs with a V-bit. Those have some advantages, but, but if you're just working straight bar, these are really all you need. I know at the Colorado Rocky Mountain School, which was Francis Whitaker's old shop, these were one of the most common styles of tongs that Francis had in that shop. He had them at his forge, he had them at most of the students' forge. Didn't have that many bolt jaw style tongs because these are really very useful and they're a bit simpler to make. Now what about our set of four punches and chisels? I think they work pretty well. The struck end I think is a little soft. I think I'm going to re-harden, re-temper, 
and go ahead and harden that struck end and just temper it back a little bit more so it's softer than my hammer, but not as soft as it is right now because I think they're a little bit too soft and it's going to mushroom really badly. It'll also give me an opportunity to go ahead and put my touch mark on them and stamp them as 1045 steel. If you haven't seen that video making those punches and don't have any idea what I'm talking about, I'll link to that right up here. Once again, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, and if you're one of the first thousand people to use the link in my video description, you can get a free trial of Skillshare. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.